last story right now of the evening. Um, and basically, this story is one that I believe many are going to be affected by right now. So this story um, is basically letting us know that time is running out. Time is running out for lawmakers to go ahead and pass another stimulus bill um, to help our current economy. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this one more than the other two stories because I believe this is a story that probably matters to most of us. We really want um, to get situated because of the coronavirus, because of the lockdowns, because of the different things going on in different states and people hurting financially. Um, I think this story is probably going to resonate with people more than um, the other two that I've already shared. So it says time is running out for the U.S. government to approve a second coronavirus relief package. So where does that leave Americans anxiously awaiting a second federal stimulus check? The cash payments that were distributed from earlier this year, there are signs that a scaled down deal might be in the works, although the popular stimulus checks may not be a part of another round of aid. Now this is scary because um, a lot of people are, are in a, a tough spot right now. There are landlords, I've shared the stories with you guys, where landlords were complaining that people were unable to pay rent and that because of the moratoriums, they're unable to evict. So their businesses are suffering. They're keeping tabs on what the people owe and the people that are not working or unable to pay the rent, they're still going to owe it in the end. So many um, mortgage companies, many banks are estimating there's going to be a, a, a mass amount of layoffs come at you know, January after the first of the year, it's going to be all kind of pandemonium and issues. And because the lawmakers have yet to come together and make a decision on how to help the American people, there are, are a lot of us that are just struggling and going through and hurting. Um, even the business that I started, um, I've been doing now full time, and, and, and we have seen a lack in um, certain duties, in certain services, certain contracts and things have been lost. You know, I work in a couple of industries, transportation, one of them, and we're continuing uh, to grow and do what we can. But right now, you know, while they're fighting and bickering and going back and forth, they're playing Russian roulette with the American economy. They're playing Russian roulette with people's lives while they're uh, continuing to go back and forth and not pass a bill. I'm going to read a little further. It says that lawmakers could still pass a stimulus bill before the Senate adjourns for its holiday recess on December 18th. But most economics believe it's unlikely to match the $2.2 trillion coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security CARES Act that was signed into law in March and provided $1,200 checks to most Americans. And while there's a reason for optimism for some form of economic stimulus by year end, the door may be shutting on another round of $1,200 checks, at least until after a new session of Congress begins in early January. Two new stimulus proposals, one from a bipartisan group of lawmakers and a less generous plan from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, didn't include funding for more stimulus checks, although they would provide money for unemployment aid and other support. So we're, we're saying basically that, hey, look, two bills were being kind of pitched, Mitch McConnell, and there were some bipartisan um, lawmakers that came together. And I shared that story on my Facebook page. And they were saying, you know, hey, look, we're just trying to get this passed because many people that are getting those unemployment benefits, the extra $600 on top of whatever their state is willing to pay, that money is going to be gone come the end of this month. Um, many of the other benefits that we've been able to get from the CARES Act, it ends after December. So everybody um, will, will probably breeze through Christmas, but come January, uh, it's going to be some problems. It's going to be some serious problems right now with many Americans in the American economy. If they can't get their act together, and today's December 4th, it said by the 18th, they're going on yet another break. They just had another break from November. You know, they keep taking these breaks, and the American people are still struggling and going through. All right. So it says, you know, given the ongoing negotiations, the things that's going on, Wall Street analysts say that they believe there's a higher likelihood of a deal this month, with Height Securities now pegging its chance at 75% up from 50% before the 
before the latest round of talks. However, their analysts find it unlikely that $1,200 checks will be included in the next package. Instead, the next round will likely focus on extending unemployment benefits, which otherwise expire for 12 million jobless workers on December 26th, and on providing aid to businesses through the Paycheck Protection Program, Height Security said. So what's basically going on is, hey, listen, we're going to take care of the companies, the businesses. We're going to try to do what we can for them. We're going to try to give the unemployment benefits for the workers who aren't working. But guys, we really do need them to pass um, another round of stimulus. There are a lot of smaller companies that have said if people are not going to, you know, patronize those businesses, if people are not going to be able to, you know, Christmas shop. This is a high time of year for small businesses. And if people are not going to spend the kind of money um, that they normally would spend to help these businesses close out their year, their fiscal year, unfortunately, many of those businesses are going to close. And they said this, you know, I shared that also on the um, on my both my Twitter and on my Facebook page where a lot of these smaller businesses are saying, hey, look, we're going to close our doors for good. And the majority of those businesses that are being affected are minority businesses. Black and brown communities are going to be affected heavily by this. Some of those um, jobs, you know, they don't pay quite as much. That, that at one point they were saying, you know, hey, this is an essential employee. We need you there uh, to work at these restaurants or to flip these burgers or to do these things. These kind of companies are now closing doors because, you know, the restaurants are some of the most risky ones and they're some of the first ones to go. And, and, and if we don't get more aid, if we don't get more help for the people, I understand the unemployment benefits, but we need money for the people for these bills. People are falling behind right now while these congressmen, these senators, these lawmakers, you know, like I said, they're playing Russian roulette with people's lives. They're, they're taking it um, casually, you know, and they're, they're, pl they're playing to their base. You know, they're telling their base that this is what you want to hear. This is what I'm going to say. I'm going to play hardball with them. They were banking on Trump winning again. And when the situation happened with, you know, so far it looked like it may be Biden come January and Trump's still fighting. So while all of this infighting is going on, the things that they were banking on and they were hoping, hey, we can pick up some extra seats and we could do this. But these things aren't happening. And everybody's looking at Georgia. Well, let's just wait till after the Georgia election and see where it goes with the, the, with the runoff, you know. And, and it's sad. It's sad. Shame on them for allowing um, all these months to pass without giving people more help, knowing that California just went through a whole nother list of shutdown demands. I got family in California. They just did a whole new plan for California locking it down. When you look at, at some of these other states and, and how some states never really made it past phase two. Phase one and two is as far as they went. Some stayed at phase one and now because of the virus spiking again, these company, these um, uh, um, states are now being shut down all over again. And it's difficult for the American people, you know, to tolerate, to stomach this. Yet, you know, everybody else is still getting paid. Washington is still getting paid. So it just says the first plan came from a bipartisan group of lawmakers who were proposing more than $900 billion in the stimulus spending. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia on Tuesday tweeted, that the group would direct $288 billion to refresh the Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses and $180 billion in unemployment aid. However, the bill doesn't appear to include funding for another round of stimulus checks. Now, this is the thing, because some people are saying, well, you got a business, you guys can benefit. You know, the small businesses, y'all could go and do the pay Paycheck Protection. But if you've been following that, there's a new round of taxes and different things they're going to roll out on those who've taken the money. They're, they're starting to go back and say, hey, you know, some of these people said they needed the money for smaller businesses and they funneled it up to larger companies and they're going to start holding those people accountable. So the money ran out. Some businesses didn't get to apply in time, you know. So we really need to fix this. And I believe the stimulus is good for the American economy. It's going to help the people. The economist just said that it's needed by the end of the year because many Americans have car notes that have fallen behind. Car insurance. Can you imagine if you have a family and you have to pay car note, car insurance, rent? If you're not, if you don't have a mortgage, let's say you're renting, because most people are in a, probably are renting. So renting, you're paying more than what it would be if it was a mortgage. Okay. And at least with a mortgage, you can fall behind like three months. You can kind of catch up or you can work deals. When you fall behind on rent, <laughs> 
you know, short of them going to, 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 to take you to the courts to get like a 30-day eviction, you get an extra month maybe, if that. But they're, they're throwing you out on skid row. And, and it's really serious, guys, that these people um, have gone back and forth and have not come up with something to help the people. It said on Friday, Speaker Nancy Pelosi told reporters at her weekly press conference that she would like to attach a new coronavirus relief legislation to a government funding um, situation. But she said that she would like for it to pass within the next week. But she and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer have voiced support for the $900 billion bipartisan proposal. So Democrats and Republicans still remain far apart on several key issues um, as far as providing hundreds of billions in funding for states and cities that have been hit by declining tax revenues amid the coronavirus pandemic and are facing the hard prospect of mass layoffs of local government workers. That means people who have government jobs and were thinking, hey, I got a pretty solid job. This is a government-based job. But because taxes are down, because unemployment and all these things, it's a downward spiral, people. It's a downward spiral. And they're leaving many of these households and these businesses hanging. Millions of people will lose those unemployment benefits by the year's end. And the nationwide eviction moratoriums will lapse after the new year. So the number of Americans applying for jobless aid rose for the second week in a row in November. A sign that the economic recovery is losing speed. We're not doing better. We're financially doing worse. And it's about time we need to do something. It really is time that we do something. Now, I want to go over this because I know I've been going on. I don't want to read the whole article uh, and who's holding up the bill and how we're on the edge of a cliff because Christmas is here. But I want to bring out a good point, guys. Because, you know, like I said, we're the independent voice. We like to think about things and be objective. So let's look at this thing. How much do lawmakers make? While the pandemic is going on and many Americans are struggling and losing their jobs, how many lawmakers are having to collect unemployment benefits. How many lawmakers right now are having to worry about the lockdown? We've seen both left and right um, exercise their privilege as lawmakers while many people are forced to stay in their homes right now. We've seen even celebrities get to kind of, you know, get a getaway and get to do things, you know, and enjoy themselves and stuff like that. Have little COVID, anti-COVID parties and these things while the rest of the American people have to continue to just suck it up. You know, oh, well, you don't have money to go nowhere anyway, so you might as well just sit at home all day and think depressing thoughts about how broke you're going to be. We binge watched all of the Netflix and all of the Hulu and all of the shows you could possibly binge watch. Appreciate y'all watching the Michael Dobbins show today. But seriously, how much do your lawmakers make? I went to the Senate.gov. And I was looking at the compensation for members and selected congressional officers and, you know, the officials and all of these people. And sometimes I would say this in conversation. I've shared this even on my show, how they're not like us because, you know, they get six figures. So a lot of them are good regardless. And that's not including other ventures and, and investments and things they may have outside of the salary they get as a lawmaker. But when I pulled up the table, and you can see this on Senate.gov, the Speaker of the House Annual salary is $223,500. Hmm. Majority and minority leaders, $193,400. All other representatives, including delegates and resident commissioners from Puerto Rico, etc., make $174,000. Chief Administrative Officer, $172,500. Clerk of the House, $172,500. So $172,500, excuse me. Sergeant at Arms, same thing. Chaplain, same thing. Legislative Council, same thing. Law Revision Council, same thing. Parliament Parliamentarian, same thing. Inspector General, same thing. Director of the Parliamentary Affairs, 172500 same thing. General Counsel to the House, $172,500. How many of them, all other senators, 174000 Secretary of the Senate, $172,500. How many of them are continuing to make six-figure salaries, free health care on the taxpayers' dollars while the American people, <laughs> while we struggle? It's a sad day, y'all. It's a sad day. 
when we can't even get another stimulus. And if you want to be frank about it, at the end of the day, it's going to be our money. We're going to end up paying the tax. We're the ones that's going to keep paying and fueling the machine. Why can you not bail us out while we're in one of our darkest hours? I'm going to read a couple of comments from you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys for sticking with me. I know that was a long segment. Um, I see Casey said they have to transition to the internet. The world is changing. Many don't want to shop in stores anymore. COVID-19 has ushered in a new era. Sadly to say, many Americans have exhausted emergency funds. That's true. People have pulled money, 401ks, all that. The other question is who is going to starve during a lockdown? Everyone is not an essential worker. Everyone's job can't be transitioned to online. Um, Efren, hey, Frank said, my prediction, right before Christmas, they'll release a package. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. But the packages that they're pondering now, neither have that stimulus bill attached. So they'll give you unemployment benefits. You'll get that extra you know, money from that, but you're not going to get um, the $1,200 so far or the money for your children even. And that's troubling. Um, Lamy Calary said, right, so sad. Case said they need to be concerned with the urban communities. People on government assistance, what are they supposed to do? They make too much money, hundreds of thousands of dollars for nothing. Why can't they take a pay cut? Even Kathy said, that's too much money. <laughs> it's too much money. <laughs> they make more money from speaking engagements, investments, intels, and favors for the business industry. That's money that's under the table. Very well spoken, Frank. That is true. Um, there are those that have made money. I'm talking about even when the pandemic hit. They said, hey, look. I mean, now, they say that they put their money in a blind trust. I'm not going to call names, you know, because I know that some stuff's going on even in Georgia. But they say, hey, look, I put my money in the blind trust. My investors invest for me on my behalf. So when the pandemic hit, certain investors put money in certain companies that provided face masks, shields, protective equipment for the medical field. Some invested in, you know, Pfizer as it pertains to, you know, the vaccination and vaccines. So these senators have made money even during the pandemic outside of the salaries that I just named that they're being paid. But the American people continue. The American people continue to struggle, my Lord. So guys, it is troubling. I will keep you abreast of the situation. If we get this other stimulus, it'll be great. But right now, things are looking really bad. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break before we get to our next segment. Thank you, guys. This is the Micah Dobbins Show, powered by Misfits of Media and Preeminent Radio. All right, all right. 